But um, Congo is a reflection of Africa. That if you look at the whole of Africa, you look at that Congo. Congo was initially taken over as a personal possession of King Leopold. In the uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I have an elect, elect, uh, electoral commission, Mr. Tarema. Good morning, uh, Sebo. Good morning, Oscar. I am not an electoral commission. You want to be fired? <laughs> what are you? <laughs> I would admire the uh, profession and say semantics. Well, welcome to the capital gang, sir. <coughs> and uh, our discussion is on Congo. Congo has conducted an election. They've had a result uh, come out a little three days later. At least now for you, uh, the Electoral Commission, those are things you've sorted out. Yeah, we congratulate our sister commission in Congo for conducting the elections and the announcing the results. When, when, when they had a fire uh, a couple of days to the election and then after the fire, they also suspended uh, election in three areas, uh, not denying a vote to over a million people. I was thinking of you particularly and how you conducted your vote in Kampala, a much smaller area than the Congo. Well, I... I think it would be improper for me to start assessing our sister commission uh, to give it pluses and minuses. It would not be in order to do that. But uh, everybody has his own challenges. They have theirs. We have ours. So at the end of the day, they did the job and it is over. I think that, uh, that, that should be commendable for them. And, and they were very, you, 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 you should add on, they were professional, they've gotten a result that does not involve the president, does not involve the government. Does our electoral commission have that ability as well? But we, we conduct elections for president, for parliament on the same day. Mm. So, you can conduct any election in this country and many offices on the same day, and we have done it before. Okay. The interesting thing, Mr. Tema, is that a, a country uh, with such a huge population like India can put out a result in hours. Mm. Uh, why, why for Congo, it, they were three days late. And Uganda, I mean, yes, you do announce results um, uh, on time, especially the presidential result, but it t takes a little bit of time. How does India manage to do their bit? Well, um, the difference is in terms of the legal provisions. In India, the provision may provide for that. In Uganda, it is 48 hours. In Congo, in other countries, the laws are made differently. And I think they are made to suit the, 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 the electro uh, environment in those countries. The other aspect is, of course, technology. And people could have an online voting system which we don't have, uh, so we, do, we, we vote, we physically vote. Uh, I want to study more about India, I haven't had an opportunity to be there, but I think their technology is advanced, uh, they have been at it for a long time, who over the years improved their election management. Uh, but you can't say, because Uganda announces results in 48 hours, then another country does it in a week or two weeks, or so, and you think that's a minus for that country. It, the dynamics are different and the laws are different depending on which country. Okay. We shall host you on, on, on the gang uh, to have a little bit more detail. But are you going to be better organized seeing that uh, you've already put out a roadmap? We put out a roadmap and we called on all the stakeholders to participate in our preparations, in our electoral activities as we prepare for 2020-2021 general elections. Mm. Delivering a successful election cannot be left to the Electoral Commission alone. We have very many stakeholders, including you, the media, including the politicians, including the civil society, including our development partners, the government, parliament. Everybody has a, a role to play in an electoral 
activities. So as long as we all work together, and that was the purpose of delivering this uh, roadmap in time, so that you get to know what we, we intend to do, when we intend to do it, so that we can move together as a team and deliver a product that we can all own and be proud of. Okay, I have a couple of questions for you from Victoria and Lydia. Okay. Mm. Um, uh, sir, I, I just wanted to ask um, that if uh, there have been any or a few lessons that have been taken from Congo for us uh, in 2021. Okay, Lydia. I just wanted to know, um, given that Congo is our neighbor, either as a region or as Uganda, whether we sent observer missions or you've been following the electoral uh, process so that you're able to contribute in terms of best practice or support systems. Uh, well, maybe I should begin with uh, Honorable Lydia's question. We didn't have observers there. Uh, uh, DRC is francophone, and the, the practice has been that we send observers to countries that are more anglophone than francophone. So we didn't, but that does not mean that we have not interested ourselves in how that election has been <coughs> progressing, the organization, the issues, the challenges. We are studying them with a view of taking lessons. So to answer Lydia's question, yes, we are taking lessons to improve ours. And Victoria, well, you kind of answered that. So thank you so much for your contribution on GAN. We shall have you here and interrogate uh, your electoral map uh, that you put out and its funding and perhaps its challenges. I'll be very grateful to come. Thank you very much. OK. Um, that was Mr. Taremwa of the Electoral Commission. Oh, you were just concluding on something. <coughs> yes, I, I'm saying uh, that is an embarrassment for Africa that um, we are failing to manage our affairs. And so when a process like the one that has just been concluded in Congo, the elections take place and they come out the way they have come out, mm -hmm. it gives hope that at long last something positive is beginning to happen. I associate myself with the comments made earlier that even with the imperfections, knowing what Congo has been going through, I think it is a plus for them. And also the second point is seeing that the contestation and is a, a not between the parties and the government or the sitting president is a good thing, but, but it is mainly because the sitting president was it a candidate in this election? His party was and had a candidate, and I think they have graciously conceded that their candidate was not good enough. The third appears to me that Mr. Felix Tshikedi is seen in the Congo, but also in the region, as a more accommodative, reconciliatory, is, is it true he paid a visit to Uganda? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Did he pick up good habits coming to Uganda? <laughs> well, that's a matter for you, you. You will see the fruits in the near future. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, our president is seen as a, as a regional, as a continental statesman. Uh, Taremo was saying that they did not say it because it is Anglophone. But we have regional blocks. Mm -hmm. uh, we have SEDEC, uh, we have EGAD. We have ESC, I, I we have I, I International Conference of Great, great, great Election, which actually currently President Seven is the chair. Uh, and you remember before that in the process of those elections, uh, both President Ramaphosa and President Lungu were here. I do know very well that those, the elections in the Congo were part of the discussions here. And remember, if you were following, actually, uh, the candidates did not just visit uh, Uganda, they visited a number of regional countries. I think to make their commitment that they will abide by, first of all, to abide by a peaceful process, but also abide by the outcome and the rules that govern the electoral process, which appears to be a good thing. Now, 
will the elections contribute towards the immediate things for Congo and the region, which is peace and security. Yeah. Our hope is that the, the, the new leader will be supported by the regional government and hopefully the usual interferers from Western Europe and America will keep away for, a, for the time being to allow Congo to settle. I had seen the French were beginning to say who, who, who won and I, th I don't mm. think that's the law in Congo. The law in Congo is that it's the Electoral Commission of Congo which <laughs> declares the winner, <laughs> not the French foreign yeah, the uh, minister. And yeah, uh, that ties with what I was saying. Yeah, this is what I was saying that if you see little France, little Britain, little Belgium, uh, are, the, are the ones that determine, uh, they want to determine what takes place in Africa and what takes place in Congo. It, it, I think we must uh, really stand up to them. Well, first of all, they rob from us. We, we must decide yeah. what we yes, want. Yes, we must stand we to them. So first of all, we should, we should no not allow them. Have a no. debt yes, then. we should not allow them. First of all, we should not allow them to rob us. If you, if you have, a, have a different school of thought, that because they have been robbing us and therefore being able to dictate a number of things, and you think they should continue? Because I am not in that school. Enabled by I am not. I am not in that school of thought. Mm -hmm. I am not in that school of thought. I think they have been robbing us essentially because we are internally disorganized. Mm -hmm. So if we are internally organized, we shall not give them no room to, to rob us and to dictate to us. And I think the, the results in Congo, I mean, if you look at Congo, Congo borders, uh, borders I think, Libya, borders the Central African Republic, borders the South Sudan. Now, for us, it would be really bad if the elections in the Congo is not settled peacefully. Yeah. So I think okay. it will give us an opportunity to deal with the residues of the peace and security issues uh, in, in, in the region. Yeah. So we stop for a break. After the break, we shall have Victoria and uh, Lydia on the same comments. And then at the hour mark, I want us to go to that song, Tuli Yambala Ngule, and what is the fuss about? <laughs> And because uh, I don't know, I even sometimes think uh, Victoria doesn't even know the meaning of Tuliambale Ngule. So, you know, when people are fussing about it. <laughs> okay, we stop for a quick break.